Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to briefly cover how to replace the rear inverter on the rear drive unit in a Tesla Model Y and Model 3. So first of all, uh, you got to have toolbox access in order to do this job. And you got to know a bit about computers <laughs> and uh, just a bit uh, diagnostic skills because it's not exactly trivial. The steps in the toolbox are very confusing and they're not in line with the steps in the service manual and uh, I had to go through the whole procedure like three times before I could finally get the car to drive. Uh, the main issue is that the, the main complexity comes from the fact that the drive unit inverter is part of the immobilizer system for the car. Uh, so basically makes it more difficult to steal the car because immobilizers spread across the a few multiple ECUs in the car and if uh, you have to basically hack into all of them in order to steal the car so when you replace the drive unit you gotta go through a special procedure uh, to basically uh, pair the immobilizer on the inverter with the with the car's computer uh, but basically it, this is all doable you, go, you gotta have access to toolbox you need a couple jacks maybe uh, two to three, four jack stands. Um, preferably a couple of people, but not necessarily. And uh, you, got, you need a lot of patience. And you need a spare inverter, of course. So first you gotta look at the Tesla manual, uh, look through all the instructions. Um, and then uh, before you even start the process, you gotta power up the car, uh, connect the toolbox, and uh, download the bootloader and the application data from the inverter. You gotta save those in the toolbox and you need to leave that uh, toolbox tab in Chrome uh, open. And then uh, power off the car and then you gotta basically unscrew the subframe. Uh, this bolt, another one on the other side, uh, this bolt and the two little ones, another one on the other side. And of course you gotta remove the two covers under the bumper and are under the motor and the uh, protective metal cover under all these connections. And then you gotta remove the power connection to the inverter, that orange cable. You gotta remove that coolant line right there. You gotta disconnect that coolant line up there. You gotta disconnect this uh, ground. You gotta disconnect that low voltage plug. And then uh, you gotta disconnect a couple of these plugs on the rear so that they don't get torn out when you lower the subframe. And then you gotta put one jack under here in the middle of the subframe in the back and one jack on the front of the subframe or even better, the motor. Uh, because when you remove that mount, you gotta offload uh, the weight of the motor off of it. So at some point you're gonna have to jack up the motor. Otherwise you're gonna have a difficult time removing that motor mount. So after the subframe is lowered, basically about eight inches. You gotta tilt it so that the front is even lower than the back, maybe raise the back a little bit. And then you gotta unscrew the, the, the front bolt that's holding the motor to the inverter. After that, you gotta remove the bracket that's uh, connecting the inverter uh, to the subframe. And uh, then there are three bolts. You gotta wear an anti-static wristband when dealing with the inverter. There are three bolts that you gotta disconnect that connects the stator motor to the inverter. You can look that up in the service manual. And then a bunch of bolts that bolt up the inverter to the drive unit housing. Take all that off, swap the inverter. Be very careful not to have the surface board touch anything and make sure you wear that wristband. Be very careful. And then just bolt everything back together. And the toolbox is the most difficult part, at least for me because it was very confusing, that immobilizer process. Uh, basically, what you gotta do with the whole toolbox process is multiple steps. Uh, and the order in which they have to be done is confusing. I don't even remember the order anymore, but it's, it wasn't exactly the order that was in the service manual. But one of the steps is a software update. Then another, is which uh, flashes the same firmware to the drive unit that the rest of the car has. Then you gotta restore the application data. You gotta restore the bootloader data. You gotta uh, reset the uh, body control module, I think, one of the two, or something like that. You'll see a step in the toolbox. And then uh, you gotta 
do an immo immobilizer pairing. I don't remember what it's called. And then, it's, and then of course, all the thermal stuff. I forgot to mention that. You, you need to enter them to thermal fill mode before you disconnect those plugs. And then after you reconnect them, you gotta flush the air out of the system. Uh, so basically, yeah, that's it. Pretty much it. You gotta remove both wheels, of course. I can leave all the suspension in place. Uh, took me about uh, seven hours to do the whole thing. By the, by the way, I wasn't on this car. I'm using this car just kind of a, as a reference. It was in a different car that I actually did this work. Anyway, uh, good luck. Post any comments, uh, questions in the comments. Thank you.